Good morning. And in conclusion, <laughs> isn't it great to be at this conclusion? Now they call it commencement, and I'm sure that's because technically it is a beginning. Of course it is. It's the beginning of the rest of our lives, the beginning of our, the rest of our ministries. It's the beginning of getting to read what we want to again. <laughs> Or maybe the beginning of not reading a thing for a while. <laughs> but just for a little while, because if we weren't all crazy readers, we wouldn't be here today. But before we get to commencing, I invite you to take a minute with me and enjoy a ceremony within this ceremony. I want to lead a conclusion ceremony. And I do have a few scripture texts, because that's become a habit. And I have a little testimony, and that's just an old-timey word for reflection. <laughs> yes, I have Bible verses and testimony. I was a Baptist a lot longer than I've been in the United Church of Christ. <laughs> and I love both. Now, I've told this story before, but when I started the discernment process, lo, these five years ago, the closest I got to what I would consider a divine call was just the breath of a whisper, or like the slight breeze off someone when they walk by you very close. Well, when I put words to it, the words that came to me were simple. Start seminary. I was listening. So I started seminary in the MTS program. And after a year or so, I started thinking, well, if I put this much work and effort into this, and I don't wind up uh, able to serve the church properly, that seems pretty selfish. So I started praying about it. Should I switch to the Master of Divinity and go for ordination? And I started listening again, and what I seemed to hear coming back from the cosmos, this is driving me crazy. <laughs> what I, that's not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I think about it, I think I have heard that from the cosmos. <laughs> what I seemed to hear coming back from the cosmos was, make it so. And then, as I've said before, I entered a period of theological crisis, wondering if Patrick Stewart, you know, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, was actually God. <laughs> and I only got through that with new data. <laughs> but I and we made it so. Another, another year passed, and I started wondering again and praying, because this stuff is hard. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And the answer that came back again was equally start, keep going. And then it all became a blur pretty much until about a week or so ago after I turned in my last paper. And the noise in my head quieted some and I took some deep breaths and I prayed again. I listened again for the first time in quite a while actually, listening deeply to deep space. And do you know what I think I heard coming back to me from the cosmos? From ultimate reality? Dare I say from God. I heard, I sensed, thanks. Just thanks. Not well done, good and faithful servant echoing through the cosmos. Not even thank you, but just thanks. That's the God that walked with Adam in the garden. That's God that I grew up with. And that was more startling to me than keep going and make it so. Really, God is thanking me? Is that possible? So I hit the holy book to see if I could find any examples of that. And it turns out, no. <laughs> not that they're not there, but I couldn't find them. God seems pretty hard to please sometimes. God's love for God's children is steadfast. God's love is eternal, but finding examples of God being pleased with someone for completing a task took a little bit. Genesis 8, 20 and 21, though, has an example. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar and the Lord smelled the pleasing odor. And it led to the covenant with Noah. So I'm thinking we too have been on a journey over dangerous waters and here we are now today disembarking the safety of seminary and most of us have already burnt offerings, <laughs> embedded theologies, familiar presuppositions, false assumptions, comfortable assumptions and cherished sacred cows and I am convinced the Lord smelled the pleasing odor from our sacrifices. <laughs> the 
especially from our most sacred brisket. <laughs> now here's another example from the great drama of Job. From the first chapter, the Lord said to the accuser, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. And then from the last chapter, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning. And in between was hell, so to speak. And I'm thinking, that's just like seminary. <laughs> <laughs> anguish, accusations from friends, and some we thought were friends. Our own complaints, our own and others' misunderstandings, and from God there are dares and double dog dares and even the biblically rare triple dog dare. <laughs> and God asserts God's godness, and God asserts Job's not godness. Along the way, God rebukes Job, but God restores Job. And that sounds like deconstruction and constructive theology, respectively. The bottom line is that God was pleased with Job at the beginning, with Job at the beginning, and God was pleased with Job at the end, all the way through Job's ordeal. And again, that sounds like seminary. <laughs> Finally, I stumbled across a diamond in the New Testament, and I remembered a familiar gem from the Hebrew Bible. The diamond is in the epistle to the Hebrews. Hebrews is a sermon to a congregation that's tired, wore out and maybe on the verge of giving up, quitting. And they're apparently confused as to how to fit Jesus into their theology. And that should sound familiar to all of us. Well, here's the diamond. The preacher in Hebrews, the preacher in Hebrews says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. I believe we have done good here. We have shared what we have. We have certainly sacrificed that kind of sacrifice. Noah's sacrifice, remember, was different. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And that leads me to the familiar gem, the prophet Micah, chapter 6, all the three verses, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Then he gets a little extreme, right? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? And then he goes for broke. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Brothers and sisters, fellow mortals, May our sacrifices be right, and may the Lord smell a pleasing odor. May the Lord bless our latter days more than this beginning. May we keep clinging to what is good, and may we preach, teach, lead, and live and love justice and kindness as we walk humbly with our God. So far, so good. God may not have said thanks exactly, if I'm wrong, you can chalk it up to scribal error. But I do think gracious God is pleased with all of us. And that's what I think God meant for me to pass along this morning. Amen.